75% of people in 2023 are gonna be setting goals when it comes to their money, but 90% of those people are actually gonna drop the ball by the end of January. In this video, we're gonna be going over the five key areas that you need to be paying attention to when it comes to your money all throughout 2023. If you don't know who I am, my name is Sebastian Guerra and I own Guerra Financial Group, a wealth management firm based out of Miami. We currently manage about $800 million of assets under advisement. And the purpose of this channel is to help people make better decisions with their money. So this isn't a channel that talks about how to get rich quick. This is a channel that specifically speaks about how to manage and build wealth over time. So let's jump right in. Before we get into these five areas, there's two things that I think we have to pay attention to. And number one is, have you gotten yourself out of all your credit card debt? You wanna make sure that you can knock that out of the way. And then the second is, have you already made the decision on buying a property? Do you already have a property? Have you already started saving for a property? So let's just assume for purposes of this conversation, you've already got yourself out of credit card debt and you've already purchased your first property. Now, maybe in your scenario, you probably don't wanna buy a property yet. And that's obviously dependent on every person's situation. So once you've gotten those two things out of the way, now we need to talk about this subject called retirement. And by the way, just so you know, retirement is not what everybody always talks about. What am I gonna do when I'm 70 or I'm 80 years old? Retirement is a very different concept. It's called freedom. So what that means is you want to make sure that you get to a point where you've amassed enough wealth that the wealth in itself can actually take care of you for the rest of your life. So for you to be able to do that, you have to build what's called a retirement plan. And this doesn't mean going and opening up a 401k or anything like that yet, but you need to know exactly how much money you need so that you have complete freedom and you don't have to work ever again. I'm a very big believer that people need to get to a point that they work because they want to and not because they have to. That we work out of pure desire and not out of necessity but we cannot do this if we don't build out what's called a retirement plan. For you to be able to build that freedom plan that we're talking about, the first question that I always ask myself is how much money do I need on a monthly basis for me to be able to stop working? So for every person, it's a completely different number. For some people, it's 5,000 a month, some people it's $20,000 a month, but let's just say that you needed $10,000 a month for you to be able to stop working today. But then we have to ask ourselves the next question, which is, if I'm looking to retire in about 20 years, will $10,000 today cover the same amount of expenses in 20 years? And we know the answer to that question is no. Because of inflation, $10,000 today in about 20 years at about a 3.5% inflation over time, you're looking at about $20,000 that you're gonna need on a monthly basis just to be able to cover the same bills that you have this year. Where in the world am I gonna get $20,000 a month every single month for the rest of my life without having to work? What I always like to do is I grab $20,000, I multiply it by 12, that gives me $240,000. $40,000. Then I grab that number and I divide it by 0 0.06. Okay. This is just a rule of thumb that I like to follow. So that means if I grab 240,000, I divide it by 0 0.06, that's going to give me about $4 million. So what does that mean? That means that my game plan, my plan should be so that in 20 years, I have about a $4 million investment portfolio. And by the way, that $4 million number, that's the number that you need so that your money can last you at least about a good 30 year period. Now, obviously, if you're planning on retiring at 35 years old, then that number, you might want it to be a little bit higher. If I got $4 million in there, as long as it's generating me that 6%, that can cover my $20,000 a month lifestyle. All right, how do I get to $4 million? Well, it's very, very simple. Ask yourself, where are you today? So do you have zero dollars? Do you have 100,000? Do you already have 500,000? Just first ask yourself that question. If the number is zero, then what I need to ask myself now is, okay, if I start throwing money at my investments on a monthly basis, how much do I have to throw in there on a monthly basis so that by the time the 20 years are up, I got my $4 million inside that account? So if my money can compound at around an average of 10% per year, then that means that now I have to throw into that account about $63,000 per year. And if I'm throwing in $63,000 a year, which is about $5,200 a month, then that means that as long as I'm throwing inside my investment account, those five grand a month, by the time the 20 years are up, I got my $4 million in there. By the way, quick plug, um, if you're in a situation where you actually want to start getting to whatever that number is, whether it's 2 million or 3 million or $10 million, uh, this is what we do every single day with families. There, You can actually click on the description below. There's a little section there where you can click on a calendar link and you can book a free 90 minute session with one of our wealth strategies and they can guide you through whatever your number is. And that way you know exactly what's gonna be your investment strategy moving forward to whatever the target that you're trying to reach. How much does that cost? It's free. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so now the second section we have to start thinking about is something called investment strategies. What's the investment strategy, the investment vehicle that I'm gonna use to get to that $4 million number? Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see with a lot of people is that they try to do a lot of different investments all at the exact same time. And I think that's one of the biggest mistakes that people end up making. There are so many people, especially on YouTube and Instagram that are constantly talking about how to be able to get rich, but everyone's talking about different things, specifically in real estate. You can make a lot of money, but you have to ask yourself, do you have the time to dedicate yourself to the management of real estate? And if that's the case, then go ahead and get into real estate. Real estate is probably one of the most lucrative investments. On average, you can make anywhere between eight to maybe 15% a year in real estate, but obviously you have to dedicate yourself the time and energy to the management of the real estate. If you're looking to buy a property that needs to be managed now, that you need to now put a bunch of work in because it needs to be renovated, do you have the time to be able to do that? If you're looking to buy a property that you're just gonna end up renting it out to a tenant and that tenant is gonna pay down the mortgage, then now the next question is, do you wanna be able to deal with tenants? Do you wanna deal with maybe a tenant calling you at three o'clock in the morning? Or are you gonna now hire a property management company that's gonna go deal with all those headaches for you? Or if you're gonna get into like the investment world, the stock market world, are you gonna be the one managing a stock portfolio? Are you gonna go in and do the trading on a regular basis in your stock portfolio? You're gonna hire, for example, financial advisor that actually does the management of that. Once you know your number of how much money you need, call it four million or $10 million, the next question is what's the vehicle that you're gonna use? And you have to be very clear in that you choose one vehicle and you master that one vehicle. And now we have to start thinking about what's called tax strategy. Now, if you're a person that doesn't make a lot of money, then tax strategy is probably not gonna be very, very important to you. But now, if you're in a situation where you're making 100, 200, $500,000 a year plus, then that means you need to start paying attention to taxes because that can mean that you can be losing 30, 40, 50% of everything you make can be going to the IRS. If we can master the game of how to reduce the amount of money that we're sending Uncle Sam, then that means that we're gonna be able to keep more money in our pocket for us to be able to build our wealth even faster. For you to be able to build out a tax strategy, we first need to understand the difference between somebody called a tax preparer and something called a tax strategist. A tax preparer is what everyone has, somebody that does our taxes on a yearly basis. Normally you pay them a couple hundred bucks and they end up doing your taxes. Now, a tax strategist on the other hand, they're a lot more expensive, but they help you save money in taxes. Now, the reason I say this is what their job is, is to be able to understand more about your situation and then tell you, hey, look, in your situation, if you do this, 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 and this, you can save yourself another $22,000 a year in taxes. Now, guess what you can do with those $22,000? Now you can go grab that and now you can throw it more into your investment strategy bucket. If we understand that we can keep more of these taxes on our side, then that means that now we can build our wealth even faster. The fourth area that I'm gonna be paying attention to in 2023 is something called asset protection. A lot of us that are gonna be building wealth over time, one of the biggest questions that I always ask myself is, what happens if somebody sues you? If you're building up your investment accounts, your real estate, businesses, I mean, all of this stuff. And then somebody turns around and they decide to sue you. You know, we just recently got a phone call from a lady that she ended up going through bankruptcy because of some really bad decisions that she ended up making. And she's now losing about an $800,000 rental property that she had just simply because she didn't have the right asset protection plans in place. And it's not only like, for example, investments and real estate and businesses, you also also have to think about, for example, assets like your home, assets like your cars, assets like your life, right? So even our own life is an asset, right? So if I'm not around tomorrow, then that means that my wife doesn't have my income that's coming in. So I also have to look at myself as an asset as well. How do I make sure that all of my assets are actually covered? So in that case, what I always wanna make sure I'm looking at is I wanna make sure that I'm looking at umbrella policies, life insurance policies, liability insurance. I wanna make sure that I go through what's called a laundry list of asset protection plans. So what I highly recommend you to do is sit down with some sort of insurance agent, somebody that can educate you. There's also what's called audit professionals. And what they end up doing is that they'll actually audit all your insurance policies. They'll charge you like a nominal fee. But what they'll end up telling you is all of the policies that you need to have to make sure that all of your assets are actually protected. So we went over the four key areas on how to build wealth in 2023, but the fifth, in my opinion, is probably gonna be one of the most important, and it has to do what's the legacy that you're gonna leave behind to your family. 
You see, throughout our entire life, we begin to amass a lot of wealth. I think by the time that I end up passing away, I might end up passing away with a couple hundred million dollars. But the question that I always end up asking myself is who's gonna get my money when I die, right? And so many times it's gonna be sometimes your spouse, it's gonna be your children. But the question is, what controls have you put in place today so that if that does end up happening tomorrow, that whatever you want to happen will happen, even if you're not here to see it happen. I know that I'm gonna end up dying with a ton of money, but what I have no control over is if my daughter eventually marries a loser. And if that ends up happening, I wanna make sure that my money stays within my family, my bloodline for the rest of history. And these types of things, they happen all the time. We had a case at our office where this lady ended up passing away, left all her money to her husband, left them $800,000. The guy ends up two years later deciding to remarry someone 30 years younger than him, and he ends up deciding to remove his three children off the beneficiaries, off the account that his wife left him. And the reason he removed his three children was because the three children were not in agreement with him having remarried somebody 30 years younger than him. And you see, all of this could have been avoided if all of the assets would have gone into a trust the moment that his wife passed away. And that's why, in my opinion, we have to go through estate planning. We gotta make sure our wills are set up, our trusts are set up, our powers of attorneys are set up. Because if all of this is set up, then I can make sure that my funds are controlled, even if I'm not here to see it happen. By the way, I know this is a lot of information, but if you wanna get a free wealth management session, you can actually click on the link below and you can book a 90 minute session with one of our wealth strategists and they'll go through all of these key areas when it comes to your money.